So while people love the look of their water-cooled PCs, a lot of people are afraid to actually get in there and water-cool their own PCs because they think there are going to be a lot of problems, you're going to have leaks and things of that nature. And while some of that may be true, and there are definitely some pitfalls with water-cooling your PC, in the end, I think it's such a gratifying experience that it's worth it to learn. So I'm going to go over some of the mistakes I've made and some of the things to look out for that you may not be aware when you're water-cooling your PC, and hopefully you guys can learn and become better builders yourself. So let's get started. So the first thing you guys want to make sure you have, have the proper tools for the job. Don't just rush into building a water-cooled computer because if you don't have the right little tools to cut your tubing, to bend your tubing and things of that nature, as you're going through the process, you're just going to be making mistakes and things are going to be coming out wrong and you're not going to know why. For example, if you try to bend the tube without putting in the little silicone insert, that tube is just going to get damaged because it's never going to have the form to be able to bend. So so that's one of the things you have to keep in mind. Make sure to have the proper tools. These are very easy to find. If you don't need too many things, maybe like a tube cutter, a heat gun if you're going to be bending your own tubes, or enough fittings if you're actually doing fittings for your bends. Of course, you need a silicone insert of some type, and some type of tool that lets you do neat 90 degree turns, like EK has their modulus, which can actually do you know 90 degree bends and things of that nature. Thermaltake also has a nice kit that has different sizes that you can do. So make sure you have what you need. If you guys aren't sure, you can ask me down in the comments if you're missing something or if there's a particular tool that can be useful for you. But these things definitely make a really big difference. There's even a little bit that goes on a drill that you can use it to make your tube, if you're using PETG or something like that, smaller as well as just hollow it out a little better so it fits in your fitting. So remember, having the tools is going to save you a lot of grief. Now the second thing that's also very important, this goes along with the tools. Make sure you have the proper fittings and the correct amount of tubing size that you want in order to be able to do your water cooling build. The worst thing is when you're trying to do your loop and then you're missing maybe a 90 degree or 45 degree fitting that would have just made it so much easier and then you're either going to have to stop your build until you go out and buy the fitting or order it or you're going to have to compromise and make an aesthetically worse loop or even a performance wise a worse loop because you don't have that 90 degree or even like an extension fitting or something like that. I find that it's better to get more fittings than you think you need by a, a couple. That way you'll have some extra. Don't get exactly the number that you need. Like if you count out four 90 degree angles that you need, get an extra one or two because what if they're in the process of building your loop, you think of a different idea or you want to do something else, or you just can't fit it with four fittings and you need a fifth one. It's good to have that extra one and you could always save it for a future build or reuse it in this build. So I always think it's good to have not only the correct fittings but a little bit of extra if you can of each one just to make your process go through a lot easier. Now another thing that can be a little bit aggravating about building a water cooling loop after you've done everything, it's happened a lot where you turn it on and something's not working. Even if you built the PC before and the actual components aren't working. Let me tell you a couple of things that have gone wrong in the past that have given me a considerable amount of problems. These may not apply to you always, but some of these may. For example, once I did a really nice loop, but my CPU temperatures were absolutely off the charts. Like I would do some type of benchmark and they would shoot up to 90 or 100 degrees or something like that. This was a delitted 7900 Intel CPU, which is a 10 core CPU. They run pretty hot, but not that hot, especially not with the type of loop that I had. I was using a monoblock, and later on, I come to find out that the way that this particular CPU was delitted, it wasn't me that did it. I got it from a third party. I didn't delit the CPU myself. It wasn't making the perfect amount of contact. Now, this can happen with a delitted CPU. There are ways to mitigate that and make sure that there's enough space 
case there if you're into deleting your CPU. But this can also happen if you don't properly mount your CPU block. You may not be really touching the contact where it should, and you're going to get a lot higher CPU temperature. So make sure you screw everything in and everything is in there nice and tight. Another big issue that's going to affect not only your CPU performance, but as well as your GPU performance are flow issues. Now, I've had a few different ways that this has hurt a build that I did. The first way is if you have any type of gunk or anything like that in your CPU or GPU block, they already have very tight tolerances for fluid to flow through. So if you have any type of obstruction in there, maybe a little piece of tubing got in your loop somehow, or maybe it's gunked up from a previous build, make sure that your blocks, your GPU and CPU blocks, as well as your radiators are squeaky clean. I know it's more work, no, nobody likes doing it, but flush it out with some distilled water or something like that. Make sure there's nothing in there. If you have to, take apart your CPU or GPU block, clean it out, really make sure nothing's in there because if you have a little bit of an obstruction on one of those channels, it's going to affect your flow immensely. That's going to give you absolutely terrible temperatures and performance. You're going to have to redo your whole loop. You're going to think something's wrong with your pump. There's going to be a million things that happens. Most of the time, believe it or not, the pump is okay. At least from my experience, I always blame it first on the pump, but it happens to be something else like it's gunked up in a CPU block or something like that. As these pumps, especially the D5 pumps, are pretty reliable and resilient. I've had an issue before with a pump mount that the tolerance was a little bit off. So anytime I would mount the D5 pump to it, I wasn't getting the proper flow. And this was in a dual D5 pump system in my case lab system. So eventually, as soon as I switched out that D5 pump top and I got a new one, all problems were solved. Something was probably touching up with the impeller or something like that. In that case, it was sort of a manufacturing defect, but you can also do it yourself depending on the type of pump top if you screw it in a little bit too tight. And remember, don't screw acrylic in too tight. This is gonna be in general, you never wanna screw something in or tighten something too tight on an acrylic block of any kind. This could be like a GPU connection plate, it could be a CPU plate or a water distribution block, anything that's acrylic. And Anything that's acrylic, you have a danger of it cracking if you tighten something a little bit too much. So just remember to exercise caution. You definitely don't want to tighten things too much. Acrylic is going to be a little bit weaker than acetyl or something like that. Another thing you can do when building your water loop to avoid a lot of headaches, make sure you have an easily accessible fill port. If you're doing a water distribution block, generally you want something that's going to be high so that way you can fill the liquid in on top of the reservoir or something like that. And make sure you have a proper drain port. Likewise, you want to put this on the lowest end of your loop possible so that way you can open up something high on your loop, let air in, and gravity will do the rest of the job and push out as much liquid as possible. If you have like a radiator in the basement, that's a good place to put a drain port. Um, there are a couple of different drain ports. There are some with the valve that you can sort of just open up, liquid comes out. There are other ones where you screw in something like a, a fitting that has you know a tube attached to it and it opens up, lets the liquid out. That way, when you you do have to service your system or upgrade something you can simply just open it up all the liquid goes out and you don't have to worry about it now even with a drain port or two drain ports you're not going to be able to get all of the liquid out of the system there's always going to be some spot either like sometimes really high up or really low on a radiator or something like that that you just can't get to without flipping the case in every single way so just try to drain out as much as you can but generally a drain port is going to drain at least your reservoir and and whatever's connected to it, it may take out some liquid from your GPU or your CPU, depending how you have it. So having something like this definitely is going to make your life easier when it comes time to upgrade or do some maintenance on your loop. So let's talk about leaks. Um, this seems to be what people are really afraid of a lot of times. They don't want their system to leak into their expensive components and damage everything. And yeah, that could be a possibility, especially around fittings or something like that when things aren't in too tight. The best method that I found to really make sure everything's good is to use something like the EK leak tester. This is gonna be an air pressurized type tester. You kind of put air inside of your loop and that way you see that it can hold the pressure. If it can hold the air pressure that tells you that you're not going to have any sort of leak 
So if your leak tester can hold the air pressure, it just means you're not gonna have any type of water leak, and that can give you tremendous peace of mind. Once in a while, and it's happened to me, so don't laugh, it could happen to you as well, you can forget to tighten a fitting or even leave a fitting out altogether. Let's say if it's a fitting that's on the bottom of a water block somewhere or the back of a pump, maybe you just forgot to put it back in, you fill your system and the liquid rushes everywhere. That can happen. So if you do something like a leak tester that I mentioned before, you're gonna catch that right away because the system's not gonna hold any air pressure. Right away, it's gonna stay at zero or not really go anywhere. If everything is sealed up nicely and safely, you pump that air up in that green zone if you're using the EK leak tester, leave it for like 15 minutes or a half an hour or something like that. And if you see that it hasn't moved, then you know that your loop is gonna be safe to fill and you're not gonna have any issues. Of course, just to be extra safe, just remember to power on only your pump. Ideally, you could use like an external power supply and just connect it to power. Just power up your pump with Molex or whatever the connection is. Leave all of your other components off. In the worst case, if you do have a leak somewhere, at least everything is off and you're not going to damage anything, the pump being the only thing on. So that's also something you can do to take some precaution just to make sure that everything's okay. So overall, to summarize, building a water-cooled computer is very rewarding, but there are a lot of little pitfalls, a lot of little things you may not know about until you actually get in there and build. So take some of these precautions that I've mentioned. Um, just make sure you're well prepared. You do a little bit of research. Make sure you know sort of what type of tubing runs you want to do. That way, when you're actually building the loop, you'll have enough fittings, you'll have the tools that you need, and you're a lot less likely to make mistakes. When you finally turn it on and see the amazing performance, as well as the amazing aesthetics that a water cooled computer gives you, you'll see that there really is no other way. Even given the little pitfalls and difficulties you may have in building the system, and remember, water cooling isn't really necessarily all that easy. If you want to do a simple soft tube system, sometimes you can throw that together pretty quickly, but even that can have some issues. But as you get into hard tubes and bending your own tubes, very complex systems with multiple blocks, there are many things that can happen. So don't worry if something happens and your build goes wrong and you think you want to give up that's happened to a lot of people, a lot of experienced people as well. A lot of times you'll see these beautiful builds, but you don't see the process that went into that. Sometimes I'll even do two or three versions of a particular build until I find what works, fixing certain performance issues, aesthetics issues. I'm doing a video also on the Fractal Design 7, the XL version, um, the Define 7 XL version, where I had a little bit of gunk in the CPU block and that was affecting my flow. So I switched everything out, added a second radiator. That made the performance night and day. So a lot of times there are little things that may be in your loop that you don't notice. With experience over time, you'll learn how to fix these issues and even avoid having them so that way your builds will go smoother and smoother. Overall, it's a very enjoyable process and I do recommend that everybody at least water cool their computer once just to see how it's like. All right guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.